Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Adam. So I got another job that came in this week and uh, I'm trying to get everything wound down here and get, get whatever I got done because I'm going to be off for you know about a week and a half or so uh, on Christmas break. So this had come in and uh, I want to go ahead and try to get it knocked out for the end of the week so I can get it back to them. Uh, this is from the, uh, the pump and motor shop and uh, this, is, uh, this is a pump. And what we what we got going on here is that this uh, this part here, which would be like the uh, the impeller, it's uh, this is the housing. That's the impeller. There's a really really close fit on this, and it started doing a little bit of rubbing. They actually uh, they sprayed some bluing on it, and uh, I and checked it, and it's uh, it's trying to rub slightly. So uh, what they want me to do is clean the faces up. I've got to set this up and uh, give it a nice face to, to clean it up. And then I've also got to set this housing up and they want it faced also. There's a, uh, you can see, they, they like I said, they blued it and you can see where it's touching around here. So they want me to get that cleaned up, but they said not to go all the way across the flange here where it, where it mounts. They said just come out just past where you can see the rubbing for the uh, you know on the outside of this impeller here just to clean it up flat and this is going to really stretch the limit of the monarch lathe i haven't even checked to see if it's going to swing yet my measurements is telling me that it's going to be really really close so i'm going to i'm going to give that a shot and uh, this is where having the big lathe always came in, in handy you know i could have I could have chucked this up out here on this outer flange in that big that big Cushman chuck I had and got it indicated really easy. But there is a boss right here that I think I can chuck. So my I'm gonna attempt to grab it here. And uh, it's aluminum, so it, it'll bite real good. And uh, I'm gonna see if that'll work. Hopefully it will. If not, I'm gonna have to resort to another longer approach to this. Possibly having to make a ring that'll bolt here that I can chuck on to hold it, which that would actually be a better solution to that. It'd make it a little more rigid, but I'm gonna try that center boss there. And uh, here's, a, here's a little better shot of the impeller. You can see out here where it's missing the bluing, where it was rubbing here. And it's, it's machined on both sides, so. I'm gonna go set this up, and uh, this one's the easy part, so I'm gonna do this one first get that done and then I'm going to move on to uh, the housing and see if I can get that set up in the lathe so I, uh, I thought this would be interesting it's a little bit of aluminum cutting I don't think I've shown much aluminum cutting so I figured I'd go ahead and show you how I do it so uh, let's get started all right before I flip them jaws around I wanted to go ahead and check this thing and see if it's going to fit and it's not going to work. It's a little bit too big and I'm going to show you. I went ahead and kind of just set these and, and held on to it here slightly. But uh, as you can see, it's trying to hit the ways down here. I just need a little bit more clearance and uh, it's just not going to work and you see it's going to hit that side too if this was round it, it would have been fine but you know with this the way it's shaped like this it just ain't going to work so what i'm going to do to make it easy on me and uh i hate to tell you this but i'm going to take this piece with me to work i've got the uh, 21 inch acre at work and i've also got the big pacemaker That'll swing 25, and I'm just going to use one of those two lathes to uh, to get to knock this out. And I really want to show it to you, but um, I, I really I'm not comfortable taking the camera down there much and uh, doing any any kind of uh, major filming. There's a uh, there's just a lot going on down there, and and I'd rather keep my work separate from what I do down there. So. Uh, but you, but you see right here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to chuck it up on that boss, 
and I'm going to get this thing indicated completely flat as close to zero as I can and then I'm going to set me up a, uh, a tool bit I'm probably going to use a high speed tool bit I was going to show you one kind of similar uh, here's one right here just one of my chip breaker tools I'm going to use something like this and I'll probably just start from the inside set it in there about like this and just face it all the way out to uh, to my stop point right there and just clean it up and then once it's cleaned up that's all I got to do on it alright so I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do on this and uh, sorry you guys ain't gonna be able to see it but I've got plenty more stuff that I'm sure I'm gonna be able to show you I'm gonna take this thing out and uh, set the impeller up okay so I got the, the, uh, the chuck set and what I want to point out before I chuck this up is the uh, on the impeller I took my gate my uh, my gray scotch bright and just kind of rubbed the back of it real lightly just to remove any kind of uh, dust and just real light dings or anything that might have been on there and the other thing that I did was uh, I also took it I'm going to bump this up against the chuck jaws and I just kind of went along each one and just kind of rub the face lightly get rid of any any crud that's been built up on it and then after I did that on all four I just took one of my little honing sticks and uh, I want to make sure there wasn't any any high spots on here on any of the chuck jaws that, that was going to throw it off a thousandth or so so what I do is I just take it and I just lightly rub it just give it a little bit of a rub and you can look at it and you can see that it's uh it's it's nice and flat any uh any high spots would be a little brighter than the rest of the jaw and uh i see a couple on there but you know i rubbed it just a little bit and got those down and i just did that on all four of them there that's so i'm not i'm not trying to uh take a bunch of metal off I'm just trying to make sure that it's flat and that's a that's something you can do every now and then just make sure your jaws are are nice and clean and uh, you're gonna get some good square holding on them. all right so I'm gonna take it and set her in here much to hold it so I'm not going to squeeze it hard it looks like it's sitting sitting nice and flat there's actually just a small contact area that it's hitting the back of the jaw there's like a little recessed machined area right right in here all right, so I'm off a little bit, and uh, this this is pretty much a fully machined part, so I should be able to just indicate the OD here. I could do the ID too; it should all be uh, you know concentric with each other. And uh, I'm gonna I'll give it some really light taps to make sure that it is up against the jaw, and uh, I'll check the face just to see kind of compare what kind of reading I'm getting because this should be this should be flat. It could have just the slightest amount of warpage to it, but it should be pretty flat. So I'm going to take a reading there and, and uh, see what I'm getting. So uh, let me go get my indicator set up. All right, got the new Noga. All right, got about a hundred thousandths or so, right at a hundred.
try not to over tighten it. I don't want to. I don't want to pinch it, but I want to make sure it's held good enough that it ain't going to try to snatch it out of there. When in reality, we're, we're really just going to be taking some very light cuts on this thing. Here's this bottom adjust feature. See the needles around here on about 32. You can uh, adjust that bottom, the uh, bottom adjust screw there. Bring it back to zero pretty easy. All right, on one thousandths. There. Plus one, zero. All right, that's it's pretty well true. It's dancing around about a half a thousandth. Where's my lead? Lead. There's one. You gotta check the bottom of these things. I set them down and sometimes little chips will stick to them when I set them down. This one wants to mess with me here. All right, that one's up against the jaw. Alright, what it's feeling like is that it's not flat. It's uh it feels like it's trying to rock just a little bit when I bump it. I'm off a thousandths. And that side's up against the jaw there. Sides out a thousandths. Okay. I know you probably can't see this very good, but the needle's jumping a little bit and it's between. A thousandth of an inch. It's, it's it's kind of moving a little bit, and then there's one spot that it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower, which keeps it within that one thousandth range. So I pretty well got it flat. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move it back around, and uh, it shouldn't be off much if it is. I just want to check the the OD run out. About three thousandths. That side's pretty tight already. Okay. I think that's close enough. I'm trying to. I got a habit of trying to get things running like zero, and uh, it always bothers me to see that needle moving. <laughs> but I think that's close enough. I'm within thousands there. Let's see what it looks like when it's running. Hopefully, it looks like it's running flat. I can't see 
see the back of the moon at all. Alright, let me get it set up and we'll start doing some pacing. Alright guys, I think we're ready to cut. I'll show you my setup. There's my tool bit I'm going to use. I've got it honed. I've got a nice radius hand honed on that tool bit, so it should leave a nice finish, I hope. And uh, I'm going to use my nice Starrett mag base indicator there. And I think I just want to set the camera up here on the tailstock for, uh, for this one here. And I've uh, got my WD-40 here. I'll probably use some cutting fluid. And I'm ready to go ahead and start making a cut. I want to go ahead and try to leave a pretty nice finish on this. So I'm thinking about using a uh, 5,000 speed rate, which is uh, it's already set for that. So here we go. And what I want to do, I want to kind of compare what's going on here. So I'm going to come up and just let me get it real close because I've got my I got my tool set where it just come out here and clear. I use my compound to touch off. I think it's going to clean that up there. Alright, well we can see where the low is now, can't we? just barely touched the the fins here we got a nice low spot there well really about halfway around uh, what I did was uh, I, run, I brought my tool in to where the lowest spots were by eye and uh, I'm just gonna I'm going to play with, with some uh, feeler gauges here. What I did was kind of just rocked it until I've seen the low spot. And that looks like 
that's going to be the lowest spot to clean up. And I want to kind of get an idea how much I got to take off here. Looking like it's going to be maybe around 10 to 12 thousandths. And I'm going to go ahead and take a 10 thousandths cut. Still a little bit right here. Alright, if we didn't get it that time, we damn close. No, there's still a little spot right there that it didn't clean up. got a touchdown that time. Yes sir, I think it cleaned it up finally. I don't see any more low spots. All right. need to cut a chamfer on the inside and outside edges here. That's going to be about it for this video. So at least I got to show you about half of it though. So I got this sucker faced off and uh, it's it's cleaned up all the way around it. I inspected it good. I did hit it just a little bit with my uh, scotch Sprite real lightly. I didn't want it to grab my fingers or anything or snatch that stuff out of my hand. But it's uh, it turned out pretty good. It didn't leave quite the, the finish that I was hoping that it would. But some of this aluminum in parts like this is a really soft grade and gummy aluminum and it's, it's hard to get a good finish and with the uh, minor amount of cuts I was taking I just didn't feel like experimenting with different tool bits trying to get a better finish on it so this this will work just fine just like it is so I'm going to take this one with me and uh, hopefully get that done tomorrow and it's going to be the same thing I just got to chuck it and bump it through and uh, 
base it out here to where the rub lines is, just just enough to clear this, and uh, that's going to be it. All right, guys, I'm out of here. We'll see you later.